Hey guys, it's Liddy here, and today we're going to be checking out this Acmer Laser Engraver. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so Acmer has sent me this laser. I hope I'm saying that correctly. A-C-M-E-R. Uh, this laser is pretty cool. To me, it looks like it is um, might be pre-assembled, but I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to open it, assemble it if needed, and then we can get to reviewing this machine. So I just opened the box and I wanted to point out how nicely packaged this machine is. I've personally never seen a laser packaged this nicely before. Everything's in its specific box and looks like we might have to do a little assembly, um, but the majority of this laser is pre-assembled. All right, so checking everything out, again, the laser is pre-assembled, at least the bases. We just have to attach the laser module. But I want to go over everything that's included. So we have the manual, and then we have this nice little uh, tool uh, container. I believe these are some nice glasses in here. The laser module uh, material package, which is super awesome. And an air pump. So this has um, air assist, which is really nice that they su uh, supplied us with this. And then accessory package. So let's uh, set the camera up and start going over everything. So the first thing I opened was the laser module head. Um, this thing is a beast. I've never seen anything like this. The first thing I noticed is this focusing tool. Um, so you pull it down and that's how you focus on your material. Uh, and then we have the port for the air assist. And um, then we have the nozzle under here. So this also comes with a couple other pieces. I believe all we do is slide this onto the mount on the laser and then use the tightening um, port on there to attach it. And here's just a close up of that just attached um, using this, there's a loosening bolt here that makes it slide up and down. So the model of laser that I have on the side of my laser says it's the TR5, and I believe this is the 33 watt version of their lasers. On the side of your box, it's marked. Um, and then of course, when you purchase it, you know which one you are buying. Um, so mine is the 33 watt. And um, just checking out in the instructions, it just tells you how to hook up the air assist, which is super easy because there already are lines ran. So I believe I just hook it up to the pump and then to the laser head itself, and then plug in the power supply. So one thing I found interesting was the air pump actually connects underneath the machine, which is pretty cool. Um, here's also the flame detection underneath as well. Uh, so if you are looking for that when you're installing your machine, it's actually uh, underneath the front box. So there's something unique that comes in the package of this machine, and it is these set of keys right here. So you can turn the laser on and off, but if you put this key in here and you lock it and take it out, you now cannot. So for a safety feature, for example, if you are going to a trade show or something and you want to make sure nobody turns your laser on or no mistakes happen, um, you can lock it with this key, which is super cool, um, especially if this is a machine you're using in your house um, and you have kids around uh, just so no accidents happen. This is something super cool to have, and I've actually never seen a uh, laser be able to be locked like this. So if your laser isn't turning on when you first get it, you can always just double check and make sure um, it is unlocked and uh, make sure the e-stop is um, not pushed in. So I have everything set up and I have it connected to my computer. Um, so just follow the instructions in the booklet and if it's not connecting to your computer after you have created your profile for it in Lightburn, there is a um, driver installation thing on the USB stick that comes with the machine, so you can install that. That's what I did, and then it recognized the machine. Um, however, on my Lightburn, I have the Ortor LaserMaster 2 profile set up, and for some reason, every laser that I um, install or you know use only works on that setup. So if you see it saying Ortor on my computer, that's the reason why, but um, everything is mostly the same. It's just to be able to use the machine. So 
Uh, this machine is 420 millimeters by 400, so a little bit bigger than the Oratoro Laser Master 2 Pro. And uh, one thing that looks familiar, this laser looks really familiar to the X-Tool laser, and I'm pretty sure it's basically the same thing, just not X-Tool. Uh, it's built the same, I believe the laser head is as strong as it. Um, and one thing that is really nice about this laser is it comes with a sheet to help you uh, start engraving and cutting things, which is really nice because a lot of lasers don't have that. So um, for beginners, you don't really know to, where to start. So this gives me as a reviewer somewhere to start with settings. And then as well as them providing us with a bunch of materials, we have cork, we have black acrylic. Keep in mind, most styled lasers only cut black acrylic because um, that's just how the lasers work. You can't really cut clear, which is too bad, but at least you can cut acrylic. We also have these uh, little cards here. We have some aluminum, I believe. And then uh, two, looks like these are the same type of plywood, just some normal craft plywood that uh, you could use for ornaments or um, other things like that. Uh, some very general things that people use while using these lasers. And then they also provided some thin material as well as a um, square that has a bunch of settings uh, or tests that they did, which is super nice because this is mostly what uh, users like me and reviewers do, um, set up these test settings to see how well this laser performs on different materials. So this is of course on a super, super thin, it's probably maybe two millimeters. So they showed us the cut uh, material depth and passes and things like that. Uh, so we can do our own tests. I'm gonna use these materials and then I'm going to also try using some hardwoods because as a creator and a small business owner, I like to use hardwoods instead of the cheaper plywood. So having a laser that can cut that is really important to me. So let's test these uh, materials that they have sent and see how well this laser works. One thing I wanted to mention uh, before we start is this laser is a little loud. Now that's because of the exhaust fan um, on the actual laser head. So I might be talking a little louder or I might have to shut the laser off every time I go over a material. But I am going to be going off of this paper here. So that's where I'm gonna start with all my settings. And if I need to adjust them, we'll go from there. So I'm going to be starting with this basic Baltic birch plywood that has been sent to me or that came with the laser. And as you guys could see what I was talking about earlier was this, uh, height setter so you want to basically rest this on your material I believe it makes it five millimeters away from the material and then you tighten your laser so if you loosen this it moves up and down so and then I'm gonna lift this back up to get it out of the way and line this up for getting to cut. So one thing to keep in mind when you uh, create your profile for your new laser um, is you want this fire button over here and usually it doesn't show up when you create a new laser so you have to go to edit device settings and then enable fire button uh, so you'll turn that on then you'll have to restart your light burn but when you turn this on you set it to maybe one percent this way you'll be able to see where your laser is at so we can turn it on here and then if, if you can't see it you just have to turn the setting up higher so now you can see the laser right there so i'm going to be using this six millimeter plywood setting so we're using a hundred power with one pass at 400 millimeters a minute. For these test settings, make sure you have current position set. Um, this means wherever your laser head is, is exactly where it's gonna start. Um, unless you have everything set up to the corner here, which I don't, I just moved it to the middle. So now we're going to set the settings and go. And as we can see, it's cutting and the air assist turns on when it starts to cut. And just like the setting said, this would cut beautifully. Um, as you can see, it cut it right out. Now I did get a lot of burning on the back, so what fixes this is using some honeycomb material when cutting different materials like this. So the next thing I'm gonna cut is this 10 millimeter plywood at 200 millimeters a minute with 100 power, one pass. So as you can see, they want us to reduce the length to two millimeters instead of five. So when I'm using this, this sets it to five. 
So now I'm going to have to lower it a little bit more so that it, it can cut that whole distance due to the focal length of the laser only being five millimeters. So with this one, I had to change the settings a little bit because when I ran it at 200 millimeters a minute, uh, it set off the flame detector. So I had to uh, restart the machine and change it to 400 millimeters a minute with two passes, which is more reasonable because I'd rather have a couple more passes than go super slow. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and show you guys that it did cut it, which is pretty crazy. I've never seen a laser diode be able to cut um, a material like this. Um, usually it has to be a CO2 laser. So this is pretty crazy, and of course you can see the cut is really nice. Obviously it's charred a little bit, but um, to be able to cut this thick is just pretty crazy for a laser dialed like this. So the next thing we are engraving is this anodized aluminum, uh, which is going to be run at 15,000 millimeters a minute. So checking out how these turned out, this first one was at 100 power. You can see it's a little inconsistent. Um, and it definitely warped the card. I believe it was just too hot. So I turned it down to 60, which definitely did a lot better. However, the colors are a little different. That might be because it is not flat anymore. So definitely you have to play around with the settings um, for engravings, things like this, especially because it's super thin. All right, so I wanted to talk to you guys here for a second while the laser is engraving some aluminum. Now this thing is really cool. Again, it reminds me of the X2 laser, which is super powerful. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is the 33 watt laser, which I've never uh, used a such a high wattage laser, which is why I believe it cuts so well. But this laser also is usable with an app on the App Store. I also believe it's on the Google Play Store. But because I use my cell phone to um, record these videos, I'm not going to go over that with you guys today. The app is super simple to use. Uh, you just follow the instructions in the instruction packet or manual. Uh, basically, you just connect the USB uh, stick or um, SD card that comes with the laser into the laser and then you connect it to your phone with the app and with its IP address. So it's super simple, but I don't have a way to show you guys how to do that. Um, so we're just going to use the computer. It's super easy. It's just like any other laser to connect. Uh, again, everything's in the pamphlet, in the manual, um, and so I've never had a laser be so easy to set up and use right away the instructions were clear um if you have troubleshooting problems there's those are in the back and that's how i figured out how to install the driver to the laser um so when in doubt just look in the packet that's where a lot of the information is and uh let's get back to the video so the aluminum engraving just finished and it's not really that hot. I expect it to be pretty hot. As you can see, this is on straight aluminum. There's no spray, no nothing. Um, this is the settings that were given. Actually, I think this is stainless steel. The settings I used were the stainless steel settings. I believe that's what it's a little heavier than aluminum, which still is crazy to me that I can engrave that on this laser dial. It's pretty clean. There's really, you can't really feel it and you can't wipe it away. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this isn't anything special, any kind of special stainless steel. Doesn't look like it and the engraving is pretty clear. Um, really surprised on how well this worked. Uh, so the last thing I'm gonna do is try cut and engrave this cork. I know I can cut it and I know I can engrave it. I just want to see the quality that it has as well as cutting this acrylic because everyone likes to see acrylic be cut on diode lasers and then cutting some hardwood maple on um, this is just an old coaster i'm gonna see uh how fast i can cut this all right so my final thoughts the material cut really easily this maple coaster cut uh with two passes at 400 millimeters a minute this was 400 millimeters a minute with one pass this was the black acrylic and the same thing goes for the cork this was cut at one pass at a thousand millimeters a minute with 100 power um, which is pretty quick so cutting cork is um definitely super easy and then i also did an engraving uh which was done at only 40 power because of course it's cork and um, it's very flammable so i did burn a couple 
uh, parts on it, but I sped it up to about 10,000, or I think it was 15,000 millimeters a minute, but the engraving on it looks really, really good. Um, and then the same goes for this uh, maple. I ran it at 15,000 with 100 power, so a really nice engraving. It only took about two minutes, so pretty quick. As I'm editing this video, I wanted to put in this little short clip. Uh, I forgot to mention that this laser also has a rotary attachment that you can purchase separately. Uh, it plugs into the back. You can kind of see there's a switch on the back of the machine to switch over the Y-axis movement to the rotary device. So you can purchase that separately and then just connect it simple to the back of the machine. It, this machine actually comes with the cord already for it, which is really awesome because then you can engrave cylindrical items like cups, mugs, things like that. So uh, definitely is another great uh, reason why this laser is one of the best that I've ever used. Um, overall, this machine is a beast. It cuts phenomenally, and engraves really fast, and it's just great. One of the things I really like about this machine is it's very industrial, it's very heavy duty, um, everything is compact, the laser, I like how the um, height measure is on the laser already, you don't have to um, make sure you don't lose a piece to measure the height of your material. Uh, I really like the safety features that it has, the flame detection, that's super important to me for someone who's really busy in the shop doing multiple things at once, so I don't have to sit here and watch the laser. The air pump is really cool. It kicks on when the machine starts engraving, so you don't have to turn it on and off, which is super awesome. So my final thoughts on this laser is I would definitely recommend this as a starter laser for a small business instead of having to go and buy a CO2 laser, which are pretty expensive and take up a lot of space. This uh, dialed laser uh, does a phenomenal job on most materials, which is uh, something that I really enjoy because for when the holiday season comes around and I need to cut thicker materials for ornaments or uh, name signs or things like that, I can use this machine because I know it's reliable and the air assist that's attached to it makes it cut phenomenal and uh, super clean. And really, it's just overall a great machine. I know it's pretty expensive, but I would definitely uh, recommend it over the Ortor Laser Master 2 Pro that I have. Um, I've had that for maybe two, three years now. So this is a new laser to me, and I definitely like it. I'll probably use it way more than I use the other laser. The only thing about this is it's really smoky. So when I was cutting the plywood or even this hardwood, it got very smoky very fast. I have a... Uh, ventilation fan right above me um, with filters on it so that helped and I opened the windows but this gets really smoky really fast so make sure you um, have ventilation this uh, company creates an enclosure for it like I do have for the Ortor Laser Master 2 Pro you know like a portable one like the Creality I think it was the Creality laser that I reviewed had an enclosure you can put over it and then the exhaust fan that pumps out the smoke, which would be definitely usable for this kind of laser. Um, just because of the strength that it has and the power, it gets smoky. So again, overall, this is a really cool laser. I'm gonna stop rambling on now and just tell you guys to definitely go buy this laser. It's super cool, um, super easy to use. Again, it's pre-built, so setup is really easy. The manual is very clear. And I know there are Facebook groups online for this laser specifically. So join those if you're curious. The customer service is great as well. I've been working with uh, one of the marketing uh, guys named Ken. So shout out to him for reaching out to me to review this laser. Thank you guys so much for sending it to me. It will definitely be used uh, probably daily in this shop for my business. So I appreciate that. And if you guys liked the video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Um, due to the gap of uploading, I have now not been monetized anymore. So I really appreciate it. If you guys liked the video and you watched the whole thing, share it if you like it. Um, if you know anybody who'd be interested in the laser, let them know about the video. Um, I really appreciate all you guys' help. And subscribe if you like these types of videos. I don't do as much as I used to, but I'm trying to um, upload more. I have a couple lasers that I'm also reviewing, so definitely check those videos out. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.